morning, um, colleagues from the media. Um, thank you for coming out this morning to our first media conference for 2018. And I want to wish you personally and to your families a very good, happy, and, and prosperous, I hope, if your media houses treat you well. Happy, happy, uh, happy prosperous. New Year, 2018. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. I want to say that on behalf of not only our executive colleagues, but the entire members of the MSV, certainly appreciated your continued um, support for our media activities, um, the press conferences that we have held. You have certainly covered them um, very effectively and well, and we want to express our appreciation for your fair and accurate reporting uh, that we received during. 2017, and we look forward to that same cooperation and collaboration throughout 2018. Um, having said that, I'm not going to give partly a written statement and partly towards the end some concluding remarks which have not been written down. I, I, I can send this to members of the media subsequently, um, sometime later today. So 2018 we believe is a year of crucial decision making for Trinidad and Tobago. The Movement for Social Justice takes this opportunity to wish all citizens of Trinidad and Tobago a very peaceful, happy and productive 2018. Consistent with our party's vision, our hope is for a better life for all of us now and in the future. The New Year's resolutions and wishes, however, are most often just so much wishful thinking. What translates wishes and resolutions into reality is action, and actions themselves are the result of decisions. How we think and what we decide is how we act. 2018, therefore, must be a crucial year of decision-making for Trinidad and Tobago. At one level, important decisions will be made by those who wield political and economic power. These decisions will impact on the lives of all of us, though we had little or no involvement in the making of those decisions. And this, of course, is a reflection of the weakness of our government system, where citizens are not involved in decision-making at all. Some of the decisions are mandated by the Constitution and the law. These include the election of a president for the 2018-2023 term. The decision as to who our next president will be has already been announced, just as Paul of Bay weeks. This is a commendable decision by the government, and we trust that it will receive unanimous support from the opposition and independent senators. Secondly, the selection of a commission of police, which has to be then ratified by the parliament. Given that there has been an acting commissioner for the past five or so years, this decision can have a positive or negative impact on the morale and management of the police service, which is critical to addressing the crime situation in the country. Thirdly, the selection of the first public procurement regulator, which is to be done by the president. This long-awaited appointment and the full proclamation of the procurement law are necessary to, some, to restore some level of confidence in the award of contracts by government and state enterprises. Our confidence has been totally destroyed by widespread corruption by past and previous governments, and this will be one but not the only measure required to end corruption. Other measures include giving real power to the um, Finance Intelligence Unit, Party f Finance Regulation, Whistleblower Legislation, and the appointment of a special prosecutor to go after white collar criminals, past and present. A fourth critical decision may well be the future of the incumbent Chief Justice, allegations against whom have eroded public confidence in the judiciary and the administration of justice. It is likely that the new president will have to appoint a new Chief Justice. As we pointed out, that the president appoints the Chief Justice in his, or perhaps in this case, in her own, um, within her own purview. Only consultation with the Prime Minister, the of the Opposition, is required. There is no requirement to take the advice of either of them. There are other decisions that are not mandated by law, but are determined by policy and political will. 
the country requires good decisions to be made with respect to the Tobago Sea and Air Bridge. The present situation is totally unacceptable and has been for uh, the better part of the last year. The Rowley government has so far failed time and time again to make the right decisions about the transport links between our two islands to the detriment in particular of Tobagonians. Second major decision that is required is the fight against crime. Successive governments have failed to deal with the country's crime problem. This is because neither the PNM nor the UNC really want to challenge the entrenched status quo, whether it is those involved in white collar crime and corruption or violent murders, or the drug trade, or the gun trade. Neither party has tackled reform of the education system, the prison system, the criminal justice system, or has been concerned about the growing inequality of wealth and income, and therefore of opportunity for all our citizens. Unless decisions are made to address these root causes of crime, then we will all continue to live in a state of insecurity. Local government reform, which disappeared from the PNM's agenda from the, after the local government elections of 2016, unless we have proper reform of local government, there will continue to be major problems in our communities, from garbage collection to drainage. Reform of the laws that govern the Tobago House of Assembly, so that Tobagonians have the autonomy that they desire and have the right to. The economy. The Rowley government has not demonstrated any plan, nor do they seem to have any ideas about how to transform the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. The result is that our economy is adrift, seemingly waiting for a tide of rising oil and gas prices and production to get it moving again. This lack of decision making is really just wishful thinking at its worst and will only take us to the point where the state of the economy becomes shipwrecked. It is to be remembered that the UNC, when in charge for five years, made decisions that took us close to being shipwrecked. So we know that they have not a clue about what needs to be done. Clear and progressive decisions have to be made to address the crisis of foreign exchange, the government's fiscal crisis, that is the gap between its revenue and expenditure, the need to ensure sustainable and decent jobs and incomes for all, how we generate growth, because it is forecast that we will either continue to have negative growth or zero growth in the economy for 2018, the growing inequality of wealth and income in our country, which has come to the fore. We made a statement about that many years ago, but it came to the fore last year with the infamous statement about a few people controlling so much wealth in the country and the issue, therefore, of the 1% and the social inequalities in our country and the many outstanding issues affecting trade unions, workers, and farmers. Citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, these are but some of the major issues that require urgent and proper decisions by those who wield political and economic power. There are many, many more. The MSJ is of the very strong view that, based on the total absence of leadership and vision offered by the parliamentary parties, we cannot look to them to make the right decisions that will result in a better life for all of us now and in the future. Their track record tells us that we can expect nothing from them in 2018 to inspire trust, confidence, and hope in the future. And therefore, if we want to look at our parliamentary parties, then 2018 seems to be a very bleak year indeed for all citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. What then can offer some hope? We of the MSJ are always optimistic that the people of Trinidad and Tobago are resilient and strong and will find it within themselves to make the leap in consciousness, what we call the revolution of the mind, which is absolutely necessary for us to bring about fundamental change in Trinidad and Tobago because fundamental real change is what is required 
to ensure a better life for all of us now and in the future. The MSJ, for our part, offers and has offered for some time a vision, the vision of the Second Republic, because the institutions of the First Republic, as we can see, the judiciary, the parliament, the cabinet, and all of the other institutions have either failed or are failing in terms of delivering a better life for all of us. The economy um, cannot, because of the nature of the economy, cannot provide a better life for the vast majority of the people of Trinidad and Tobago who are working in just for enough money to get them back to work the following week or the following month, and for many not even to be able to provide properly for themselves and for their families. And for many, the economy offers no hope of a job, whether it be the young professionals coming out of university uh, this year or who graduated last year, or for the 40 to 50 percent of our young people who are consistently failed by our education system. Our healthcare system continues to fail thousands of citizens who have to struggle um, in terms of, of accessing decent health care in our public institutions and don't have the money to go to private hospitals and to private doctors. We have offered in terms of the economy the only idea to change the, the state of our economy. We have offered the idea of the social economy where wealth and income can be generated in communities and so people at the grassroots can have enough income and wealth for themselves and their families for generations to come. We have offered the idea of a national reconstruction project to address the crisis of infrastructure, the threat of natural disasters, and the threat of the failure of asset integrity in the hydrocarbon sector, the energy sector, in, in the oil and, and gas industries. We have offered um, hope in the sense that we are the only party that is prepared to challenge the status quo. In fact, our policy document is entitled, um, or is subtitled, Challenging the Status Quo. We have no fear of the status quo, those institutions, those who control economic power, those who control political power, those who involve in criminal activity. We are prepared to challenge all of them, all of that status quo that has us in the mess that we are in today, which mess will get worse in 2018. And we have the track record to prove it. Um, we are not about rhetoric. We don't engage in a set of, of old talk. We don't engage in personal attacks and vilification of other people in public uh, affairs just to get grab headlines because personal vilification and, and, and those kinds of attacks doesn't move the country forward, nor does it bring about a revolution of the mind necessary to bring about fundamental change in the country. But we stand on our track record, as our mission statement says, with integrity and credibility, we listen and work with you, so together we will transform Trinidad and Tobago. We will ensure that every voice and contribution is heard and respected, that everyone is treated fairly and justly, and that our economic system benefits all. Our commitment to you is that we will all live in peace and in harmony with our environment. And in terms of our work plan, later this week, in fact on Thursday, the party's leadership, a number of whom are here with me this morning, to my far left, Ozzy Warwick, our general secretary, to my immediate left, deputy political leader, Radical Broadbands, to my right, our public relations officer, Alenia Bacher, behind her, um, Gregory Fernandez, we are known to you as our party chairperson, and to his left, our party organizer, Theo Henry, and coming in, but not in your frame, is our education officer, Kevon Agostini. These are just some of the members of the executive. But they, together with other members of the party executive, and um, our activists will be meeting on this Thursday all day to um, identify our work plan, um, where we go back into the communities in 2018, listening to communities and working with them, and building our political movement reaching out to others in our community, in our national community, um, and also putting forward our proposals on crime and violence, the state of the economy, 
the state of the healthcare, well, to, to, to transform the healthcare sector, to transform the economy, to transform the education system, and so much more else that is wrong in Trinidad and Tobago. And those plans, of course, will be uh, released after our meeting on, on Thursday. Thank you. And of course, we are open to questions about anything that I've said or anything that I have not said. Um, as usual, we are very open to engage with the media. Well, at our party congress, you know that we said, and even before that, we said we'll be contesting the 2020 elections. But we started last year with a program of community speaks, um, and we went to um, three or four communities, and that was put up on YouTube, and it put actually was rebroadcast, or part of those programs were rebroadcast on radio. So we're going to resume the community speaks. We held off on it because it was towards the end of the year and so on. Uh, but we're going to resume the community speaks. And we will also be um, resuming, as I indicated at our last press conference in early December, we'll be resuming our citizens' intervention uh, programs as well. So we'll be out there in communities and engaging with all sections of the national community through one or other of those two activities um, and we'll also be doing walkabouts and a ton of other activities as we build our membership and, and strengthen the work of the party um, for the task of transforming Trinidad and Tobago and yes for the task of the 2020 elections. The presidential Right. But as, at the start of the very start of what I said, I said it, uh, the choice of by the government of Justice Paul of Weeks um, is a very commendable choice. We, we support uh, Justice Paul of Weeks um, as our next president. I think that uh, she would bring uh, a, a breath of fresh air and perhaps re restore some sense of confidence in the office of the president. As you recall, when President Carbona was elected and he made his grand um, inaugural address about powers that he has and powers that he does not have, etc., etc. That was a phrase that most people remember. A lot of people felt, you know, a renewed sense of confidence about the office of the president. Um, and I think that many issues arose subsequent to that, including the issue of the housing allowance um, and other matters that, that um, took the shine off the presidential new wall. And so we, with the appointment of Justice Paul week, weeks will, I think, restore some justice to the office of the president, which will uh, be good for Trina and Tobago. She lectured for many years at the Hugh Wooding Law School uh, in ethics, and, and so I, I'm sure that she will bring you know, a high ethical standard to the office of the president, which is important. Well, there's, when, when somebody gets elected, because they're elected um, by the parliament, though of course it is a choice of the government that normally prevails because the electoral college of the parliament consists of all members of parliament, all members of the senate and all members of the house of representatives, um, and therefore the government has a built-in majority and normally we get the support of many if not all of the independent senators. So, so that the government's choice is usually a shoe in for, for the president. Um, the fact that somebody accepts nomination for president means that they know that it is not for life, that they will be subject to a process uh, that they see them serving only one term. And I think that there was a general view in the country, uh, quite apart from the fact that there was a change in government um, subsequent to President Cameron being elected. Though the, my recollection is that the PLM at the time had supported his, his, his election, uh, but that there were questions about President Cameron. I mentioned some of them uh, that took the shine off of, off, of, off, of, off of the President's seat during his tenure. And so I think it was appropriate that we have a new person in the office of the President. Well, the new President's function, Yes, 
Yes, there, there needs to be major constitutional reform, um, and it is not only the reform in terms of how we identify uh, and select or elect a president, but we need major constitutional reform all the way through in terms of how a prime minister, um, someone becomes prime minister, about we need to reform the parliament, we need to reform um, all the institutions of state, which is why we talk about the Second Republic. So we can't just say we need to change one thing and not make fundamental changes to our whole system of governance. But within that change, we agree that the, the way the president is selected should also be changed. Yes, but what I, 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 and the state policy has policy position which we put out since 2014 identifies all of the things that needs changing. One is the officer of the president, but I don't want us to focus only on the officer of the president because we are having the election of president um, this month. We tend in Trinidad and Tobago to just focus on one thing because it hits us um, when it becomes necessary for that decision to be made. And then we go on and we wonder why things don't change completely or we don't have major changes in, in our life and why one person can't make a fundamental difference. And, and, and so we need to shift from simply looking at one aspect or change one thing to look at changing fundamentally our system of governance. So, just to be clear, you are looking for what parties who will find the CJ? Yes, we, yes, the issue that the country faces is that um, and we are not now talking about whether all of the um, things that have been in the public domain reach the standard of impeachment of a chief justice. We have not said that because we don't have all of the evidence. But quite clearly, the judiciary has been brought into disrepute. Um, and so the confidence in the institution of the judiciary, uh, and we had said this way back in, we said this just after Marseille Air Caesar in a press conference. We said that we thought that the position of the chief justice had become untenable uh, because it was creating a crisis of confidence in the judiciary. So it's not a new position. And therefore, we think that for the confidence in the institution to be restored, there needs to be a new chief justice. of the country, that, that we have no doubt about. Um, the issue, the other issues that you have addressed about reforming of the criminal justice system and improving the administration of justice, those matters do not lie solely in the hands of the Chief Justice because reforming the criminal justice system um, requires Parliament to be involved in terms, for example, of getting rid of preliminary inquiries so you don't have two trials, two full trials, um, one before the Manchester's Court and then a second one before the High Court for indictable matters. Of course, there are some matters that the Manchester's Court will continue to deal with. Those are summary matters at the level of the Manchester's. But Manchester's also have to hear indictable offenses like murder, um, rape, robbery, aggravation, serious crimes, right, including serious white-collar crimes like the Apple uh, inquiry, for example. All of those are uh, indictable offences and, and you therefore have a first trial in the Manchester's Court and then a second trial in the High Court and, and that process is, is, takes way too long and therefore justice delayed is justice denied. So we need reform of the criminal justice system which is why we need the Second Republic. Yes, as we come back to giving reasons why we need the Second Republic um, and why we need to challenge the status quo including challenging attorneys who are very comfortable with the system as it is because the more times they go to court, the more, time, more money they make. So we have to challenge all of that. Um, and, and so it is not only having a new Chief Justice that will, risk, will, will get us a better justice system or improving administration of justice. Um, that is just, a new Chief Justice will simply restore some level of confidence 
in the institution of the judiciary. But we need to have major reform of the prison system, the, 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 the criminal justice system, which results in people being on remand for, for decades without going to trial, which pro creates problems in the prison system, which um, causes um, many people to come out of prison inclined to, to become repeat offenders, to become more hardened criminals. A whole series of things have to be done, which is why I come back to say that only the MSB has offered the idea of the Second Republic of fundamental transformation of all of our institutions of state. Okay. Anything else? Anybody? Thank you.